and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name's Jason and this is the 67B Volkswagen 1600 TL. Introduced into the Matchbox range in 1967, the casting is based on the 1600 TL fastback version of Volkswagen's Type 3 compact car that was built between 1961 and 1973. The model lasted over the transition period to Superfast in 1969 and survived until 1972. This model was chosen by subscribers in the community section after reaching 2000 subs. I'll certainly try to publish a public vote for each 1000 subscriber milestone the channel reaches. It's great to have some additional input. To have more of a say, please join the club on Patreon where you'll be able to regularly access exclusive content. Anyway, back to the build. As you will have seen, there are two models. One has already been restored and repaired to a degree by somebody else. And the original one I've got doesn't have any doors. I'll be combining the two to make a best of both worlds kind of scenario with these. There's some severe damage to the structure of both models. The casting is significantly weakened around the A pillars and also along the base. So I'll need to do some fairly major surgery on these. In addition to the missing doors, the red one has a cracked windscreen which would need replacing. But otherwise the components are all pretty decent to be fair. The paintwork obviously in very poor condition. So that will need a nice new coat of red. Face is in good condition, the tyres are a little scruffy. And there's a bit of paint on the purple windscreen which I will be reusing for one of the models. The model in regular wheels form came in red with a cream interior, clear windows and opening doors. When they hadn't been pulled out of course. The base plate included the bumpers, headlights, fog lamps and registration plate. And as such silver trim was not applied. Original wheels were black plastic with a chrome plated hubcap glued in place. These were later changed to the more standard chrome hubs with separate tyres attached. The model was also released in the G4 Race and Rally set and this came with a brown plastic roof rack with luggage attached. As mentioned it switched to Superfast in 1969 as one of the first five models to do so. In Superfast after initially launching in red the colour was swapped out to shades of a hot pink and purple as the person who'd restored it prior to me had tried to do. And in those previous scenes you can see that the models had both come apart after trying to dismantle them. Here you can just see a big old chunk of the purple paint come away and float to the top. With the super fast models, smaller fatter tyres were fitted late in the production run before it was discontinued in 1972. The real life Type 3 was discontinued a year later. The Type 3 diversified VW's range with existing models being the Type 1 Beetle, the Type 2 Bus and the Type 14 Carmen Gear. The Type 3 borrowed a number of features from the Beetle such as the air cooled rear engine and rear wheel drive setup. Here I'm just masking off the base so I can use it as a bit of a template while gluing the components back together that made up the model. This is the biggest surgery I've had to do on a model so far. The 1600TL was first launched in 1965 after the notchback was launched in 1961. Between times saw the launch of the estate or squareback in 1962. And during its lifespan over 2.5 million Type 3s were made. So here you can see just how the model fits back together. I'll just need to apply some glue and some sodium bicarbonate onto it just to make it dry that little bit quicker. And that's just what I'm doing here using some super glue. I use my dental tool just to guide the glue just into those gaps so it strengthens it. And then I can apply that bicarbonate of soda just so it sets nice and quickly. Here I'm just doing it to the other joins as well. Not too much later and it's dried out and I'm just test fitting the doors just to make sure they fit back into my readjustments and my measurements. And sure enough they look pretty good but they will just need some rubbing down so I use a metal file just to even off those edges to allow those doors to fit back in properly. And once I've filed it down I've reattached the doors and I'm just checking that it all fits and closes properly and it creates a nice seal. This shell was the purple version which was actually in worse condition to begin with. 
but I didn't need to refabricate the A pillar with that one. So once I'm happy with it, I'll apply the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in light grey. The joins are all looking pretty decent to be fair. It's gone on in a very nice smooth and even layer. And none of the details are really lost to any of the primer there. Paint of choice today is the Tamiya TS8 Italian Red. A very, very close match to the original red of the model. It's really quite vivid, stands out, and I think it will suit the final model. But you can barely notice any of those joins now. Now that the colour's applied, it certainly looks pretty good to me. Next up, I'll give all of the components a clean, so that includes the suspension unit. There's the hubs from one of the versions of the model. And the tyres that accompany it. They will need a bit of attention, the tyres. Here's the plastic version with the hubs glued in. And then here's the windscreen in good condition. The windscreen will just need a quick shine in the wood floor polish a bit later on. Now here's the disgusting old interior. Lots of black particles there. And I'll give them a scrub in the hot soapy water. And sure enough it cleans up quite nicely. All of the components there, all in place. Nothing lost or broken from these, so they are perfectly reusable. Which is what I like to see. Next I use my battery drill to remove the surface rust from the axles. And here you can see after cleaning there's some paint residue on the windscreen. So I'll pop it in to some Dettol antiseptic liquid. Which should remove all of that paint. Left this for about an hour or so while I was doing some other bits and sure enough it just peels away. And that really applies to all of it. None of this was stubborn paint at all, it just sort of swept away. So I brush it over with some toilet paper and then just focus my attention on some of the crevices. So here are the hubbed wheels. They're looking a bit scruffy, a bit misshapen. So I took some drastic measures and decided to use my rotary tool with a diamond cutter piece attached to smooth off those rough patches of the wheels. Eventually they came up looking pretty good. Next up, I apply some of the Auto Soul Metal Polish to the base. And then use a buffing attachment to clean it all off. Now using another attachment, I use a split pin to form a new A-pillar for the other casting. And here you can see it will fit in the gap there, I'll just give it a bit of a rub down. And then using some masking tape, I can hold it in place. While that's all gluing in place, I use some Citadel Gloss Oil over the wheels. And then on the hubs, I can apply some chrome paint from a chrome paint pen. And then using the same pen, I can focus my attention onto the base, applying it to the lights and onto the bumper and the number plate. And about here is where I realize that I am missing the central fog light. So instead of really doing a great deal about it, I decided to file it down and use it for the second model. This is mainly because the fog lights I believe were an optional extra for the Type 3. So I decided just to smooth off the area where it had broken and just leave it as two even fog lights. It looked pretty good in my opinion. So I reattached the wheels and then I can apply some more of the chrome paint onto the ends of the axles. And then it's time for reassembly. So in goes the windscreen. And then here's the suspension unit attached to the cleaned up interior, looking very fresh. That slots back in with a bit of a firm push. And then it's time to reattach the base, which can then be screwed into position. So here's one of the two models I started off with. As you can see, there's some issues with the A-pillars, missing one and the other completely disattached. The windscreen is cracked and broken. That paint works in very poor condition and some of the other joins are also looking very frail. The wheels are looking fairly damaged and unfortunately it's looking like I can't reuse too much of this model. Luckily though I had another model in hand that I could borrow some components for and mix and match and try and complete with at least one whole model. Unfortunately though the doors aren't available as replica parts 
from any of my usual outlets that I've searched through. So if anyone has any spare parts or spare doors for this Type 3 then please do get in touch in the comments below. I'd appreciate it forever. So this fastback was looking a bit sluggish. And here is what it looks like now. That vivid fresh coat of paint is the first thing you notice. With the rejoined A pillars ever so slightly out of shape but it's probably the best I could manage. Those chromed up hubs looking really quite good I think. And the tyres have been freshened up as well. The windscreen has been given a polish. And the chrome has been applied to that rear bumper. I've got to say this has been one of the most satisfying builds. I'm so glad you guys chose it as the subscriber's choice. It's really been quite an effort to get it back to this kind of condition in just a short couple of weeks. Now of course there were two models in this episode. And I've not just discarded one entirely, I've reformed the other. But as I said, because there's no doors, I wasn't really sure what to do with it. So suggestions in the comments please. Here's the uh, pair of them with the doors open of course on one and the primed shell of the other. The base also looks pretty good for the other one. I would like to do some custom wheels for it perhaps. But like I say, I just need those doors. So if anyone knows anything, please get in touch. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you again for the next one. Bye for now.